Yes. Okay, and this link is in the notes also. So, okay, the queuing system. And this is what I wanted us to get to from the last one. So now we're talking about what makes the cluster unique. Should I give a shot at it? Yeah, go right ahead. So well, how about we have this metaphor? So at Alta Universities, there's two Linux servers, which are designed for students to use to run calculations on if they need something with a little bit of computing power. They're called brute and force, and they sort of really are a brute force solution. So what's the problem here? Anyone can connect there and run anything. So basically, they're always overloaded. And there's so many things going on on these single nodes that everyone is slowed down, and it takes longer for everyone to get through. So the main difference of the cluster is Slurm itself. So Slurm, what's it, queuing system, workload manager, whatever. So Slurm is the thing where you can tell, OK, I have this program that needs five CPUs, and I expect it to take about two hours. And it will put it in a queue, wait until you have those resources, schedule it on these other nodes, and then return the results back to you. And that's really the main thing we're talking about for the next two days, how to tell Slurm what you need, and then see the results come back. What yes, do you think? Uh, was that a yes, good? Yes, I think that was completely correct. But I would also add that Slurm isn't only about managing the resources. It it can give you a lot of other stuff uh, besides that. So it can give you monitoring output of what your job was doing. It can it can show that sort of like uh, more monitoring output. It can uh, help you organize your work. So you can you can run a lot of different uh, programs uh, at the same time so so you can run like massive programs at the same time with minimal minimal changes to the code yeah. and it it helps you like act like get more productive and and it's it's basically the way that you want to use the cluster that is the way that the cluster has been designed that, like that is the backbone that the cluster has been designed for so so like Mm -hmm. everything in the cluster has been designed in a way that it's going to be used through the Slurm. So you really yeah. should get familiar with Slurm. Um, so let's scroll down to this metaphor here. So there's two parts to the metaphor. So both are about food again. So sorry for the people that didn't want to talk about pasta anymore. <laughs> but we're about the scheduling resources part here. So there's a restaurant. You go to a restaurant and there's more people who want to eat than their space. So you talk to the uh, house manager and say, hey, I'd like a table for two people. And they put you on the list. And when a table opens up, they'll look and see what's available. So they might say this table is for two people, in which case the first party of two gets it. They might say, this is a table for two people, but the next party is four people, so they have to wait, but the one after them can come. Or they might even say, okay, this is a table for two people, but there's another table for two people opening up next to them soon, and I need a table for four people. So they strategically leave it be empty for a little bit. And this is basically what's happening on a large scale automatically on the cluster. So here's an interesting question. What happens if you go to a restaurant and you say, yes, I'd like a table for 10 people, and then you wait, and then you actually only have two people eating? What's the effect on you then? Well, it, of course, the effect, the effect on you is that you will be waiting a longer time because like the the house manager thinks that there's 10 people coming, so we'll, he will uh, have to reserve a table where there are 10 spaces. But then when only two people show up, then all of the eight other spaces <laughs> will be empty because, mm -hmm. well, they didn't show up. Yeah. But you needed to wait, wait for that table to be free. Yeah. And they're probably not very happy with you and won't give you any kind of priority next time you come. 
what happens if you reserve a table for two people, but then you're four people? Well, then two people need to stand, stand or you yeah. need to do it so that two people yeah. are seated and then they, they eat their food and then they stand up yeah. and the two people who are standing get seated and then they eat their food. Yeah. So basically when people yeah. uh, they are eating, they, it will get crowded and that yeah. means that you're not going to get the uh, yeah. effectiveness or the simul simultaneous usage of the uh, simultaneous eating yeah. that you expect. Yeah. And these are all real things that happen on the cluster. People reserve too many resources. They reserve not enough resources and so on. So that's why we're talking here. Is there anything else on this page we really need to say if we scroll down? So, so yeah, I would, I would about... add there oh. that the, the main or the big part here is that Slurm not only manages the, the process of like getting you the table that you need, this kind of correct kind of table that you need, but it only also manages the uh, the cooking process in the background. So basically, mm -hmm. like you don't like you can just say that uh, say that you want to eat the pasta or something like that, and somebody will make you that pasta dish and bring it to the table, mm -hmm. and you get the results that you want uh, without yeah, having like, to do the cooking yourself. So like so you can do the parallel stuff. thing. Yeah, you, you order have 10 different to... dishes at the same time and they all get made in parallel and brought mm -hmm. out to you or or um, I was um, or you don't have to like cook you cook yourself like you don't have to mm -hmm. book a table mm -hmm. and then go to the kitchen and cook your own food and then bring it up so basically right. this analogy which is getting strained by the moment <laughs> is, is yeah. meaning that like yesterday there was a question of what happens if uh, if you lose a connection to the cluster when you're running something? And mm -hmm. Slurm can manage manage these jobs so that they're running on on the background in the in the correct places so that mm -hmm. you don't have to be connected to the cluster while the stuff is running. Uh, yeah. We'll be talking about this later today, but but yeah. basically this is something that uh, Slurm can also do. Yeah. So this next section, we talked about the basic process. So what are the resources Slurm manages? So as in when you're requesting this table on the computer, what are you actually asking for? And that's basically some number of CPUs, some amount of memory, and how long it is. And there are a few more dimensions here, but... Yes. Yeah. So these are the basic ones that, that every program has. And these are the, the things that we talked about yesterday, how you can like give like a rough estimate on these things. But these are the basic things that Slurm manages. And, and we'll be talking about how, how do you give this information to Slurm uh, in the next coming sections. Mm -hmm. So there yeah. are these flags that you can give Slurm, but we'll be talking about those in uh, Yeah, I guess we don't need section. to go through that. OK, um, yeah. And there's all kinds of other submission parameters. For example, you can request a table that's all by yourself as in an exclusive mode if you're doing performance testing or you need only the latest kind of GPU or latest kind of CPU architecture because of benchmarking and stuff like that. But we don't need to talk about that now. That's for later. Um, partitions. Hmm. What's the restaurant yeah. metaphor for that? Yeah, maybe we. Should, yeah, maybe it's like uh, you want to, to eat on the patio or in the veranda instead of eating inside mm -hmm. or something like that. So you want mm -hmm. to only use the tables that are uh, on the outside or something. I don't know, but but basically, maybe the restaurant analogy won't work with this as well. But, <laughs> yeah. But in in many clusters, uh, the the oh. different kinds of of compute nodes are separated into these partitions. So uh, if you're using um, other clusters or in our, our cluster also, there's a few of these partitions that yeah. like the, the I have a good example. Are, yeah. What about, so you're doing a debugging task, like you just want to test something out quickly. So you come to a restaurant and you ask to sit at the bar so you can order quickly, you eat, and then you dash out of there right away. And you can skip the long queue for the, sit down stuff yeah that might be a, yeah. like a good analogy 
but I think and, maybe we yeah. should go on. Really... And I guess we can also say at least on Triton, the Alto cluster, you don't need to worry about partitions that much. So we have a script that will automatically set all of these things for us. But on some clusters, this actually is important, and you have to say where it is running. But I, I think it's uh, the queue is kind of like like the matrix that you cannot be told what it is without like actually testing what, mm -hmm. what it does. Yeah, so, yeah. So maybe maybe so we let's do it. Have... Yeah, and actually we're right on schedule now. If we go on, so good. Yeah. Okay. Let's see from HackMD. I will switch there and, I mean, the notes. Let's see if there's any interesting questions. About Slurm, is Slurm the same for Terso or other clusters? So Slurm is the generic open source product that, that manages the cluster. And these days it's used by almost every cluster you can see. Certainly all the ones in Finland. Yeah, there um, are other other managers like PBS and uh, QSub or something like that. But but yeah. uh, the main idea is that all of these do the same thing. They just have different kinds of commands and, and, and stuff. But basically, they all do the similar kind of a thing. They all manage these resources yeah. and they have a queue. So yeah. it, like it's translatable. But Slurm is the most popular one. Yeah. And this next question is really good. If I submit a job on Slurm and after that it's submitted, you modify the code to test something new. When the jobs run, which versions run? So we actually have some exercises we just added today about this. So we'll see, but you're thinking the right way here. So I think if you're asking this question, you know what the answer is. And yeah, okay multiple things to Slurm at once. Yes, and once we get to tomorrow to array jobs, you'll be submitting hundreds of things. Well, not in the demo. Remember yesterday, Yarno submitted a thousand Slurm jobs at once in order to run everything together. And that's sort of the main point.